Okay, looking at the third part then, we're going to try to do some more slightly complex parts because your camera isn't going to be as square and as blocky as this. Okay? So I've saved my work. If you come back to your computer, it might look like this, and it's, you need to know how to get your work back. There's nine little squares here that say show data panel, and that will bring up all of your different drawings. Okay? You can keep things in folders. You can create new folders, which we can look at later on. Uh, in this case, we're just going to double click it, and it will open up into your screen. Depending on the speed of the computer and how complex your drawing is, it might take a little bit of time. So I've got my drawing there. Okay. Um, what I can now do is uh, we can start to curve parts, for instance. Okay. So you'll notice that there's a bit that says modify. And modify, there's a range of different things, lots of which we won't go into at the time being. Probably the most common ones that we're going to be using are chamfer and fillet. So let's say my button and zoom in on my button. So if you're on a Mac, you can do the kind of the pinch command. If not, you can scroll your wheel on the mouse or there's zoom buttons like so. So I'm going to have a look at this and I'm going to start to curve some of the edges. So I can select one edge at a time or if I hold down shift, I can select more than one edge. So I'm going to select all of those edges or corners and I'm going to go to modify and fill it. And fill it is like a curved part. So again, you can either pull it, like so, or if you know the radius of your buttons, which is quite tricky to measure, but if you have done that, then you can type in the radius like so. Okay. It will also work on all the other edges as well. If you make a mistake, you can control Z it. It's probably the easiest way. So this time, if I have a look at doing these ones as well, so I need to try and get the one behind, which I can't get at the moment, so I can rotate it and get it like so. Spin it back. If it's hard to spin back, remember how to do it. Press the home key. It's the easy, easiest way. And then go to modify, fill it. And this time you'll notice the shape goes more of a kind of a, a rounded rectangle. Okay. Again, you can type in the correct dimension if you know it. Okay. Nice and easy like so. So you can do that with all different parts. This time I'm going to show you what the chamfer uh, key is. The chamfer key is ever so slightly different. So I'm going to select those four edges this time. Put it back to my isometric view. Go to modify and chamfer, as you can probably see from the diagram, is like a slice instead. Okay. So instead of it rounding it, it makes it flat. You might not have, have any of these on your camera, but most objects will have even just a slight chamfer. Going back to our product analysis, it just makes things a little bit more comfortable to, to hold and handle rather than uh, it being really sharp. So that's all to do with, with ergonomics like we looked at before. Okay. So they're the, the, uh, the chamfer and the fillet tools. Another thing that might be useful is if you go to display settings you can change the visual style of it so my button looks a bit odd with these lines you wouldn't actually see them in real life if I go to visual style and shaded it gives a more I guess natural view of what your camera is going to look like so depending on the shape that you've drawn if it's got loads of lines on it and it looks a little bit weird then you can just change the visual style you can have it just as a wireframe, for instance. There's a few different options that we can probably look at later on. But most of the time, we leave it unshaded with visible edges only. Okay? Have a go now at looking at your camera. And at some point, you can start to shape all the pieces that you need. Don't forget, save your work.